Hello everyone. This is uh, part two of my video for Gansian. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, basically the Celtic version of the Headless Horseman. So, And uh, last time I think I screwed up and I told everybody to uh, go to Christopher Cott Fine Art at gmail it's actually chris cott fine art at gmail.com so and i think i have that on there for you to see maybe not let me adjust that a little bit so you can see so if you want to write that down and so if you have any questions or you know anything you want to discuss you can write me there and, of course, you know, as everybody says, if you wouldn't mind, please, uh, you know, click like and subscribe for my channel. And, yeah, so. It's always rough getting back to work. I'm trying to remember where you were at your heat setting. I'm getting comfortable with it again. I don't know if other artists have that same issue or not, especially pyro artists. But it's, uh, <clears throat> I've noticed even with the, uh, the more expensive burners like what I've got I got a, a razor tip which I ordered from Canada for those that are interested um, and I have a story for you on that in just a minute but whether you're using a hobby burner or a more professional grade burner like a razor tip um, my experience has been that as you burn throughout the day, afternoon, evening, whenever it is that you do it, it will have a little bit harder of a time <clears throat> kind of uh, regenerating, recalcitrant, whatever you, whatever you call it, it's, uh, it's heat. I mean, it'll continually heat, but it won't do it as well as it does the first time you switch it on. It's like, I don't know if the device gets overheated or what. Um, but I've had that with hobby burners as well as higher end burners as well. So, something to keep in mind. And if you start to have a lot of problems with your heat, <clears throat> might be time for you to uh, either change your stylus or your cords. Um, sometimes that can help. So, so if you're starting something, especially if you got a lot of time into it, I would advise that you would start off at a lower heat setting than what you left off and work your way into it very carefully or you might get some overburn and get really, really mad. never a good thing. So. And as for my little story, well first let's talk about burners a little bit. And I might have discussed this. Um, I know I've discussed it on Facebook and other forums before. Um, I can't remember if I've ever discussed this on the first video or <clears throat> I don't think I did. But uh, if you've never wood burned before or maybe you did, you know, when you were younger and just kind of screwing around and you're, you're wanting to try to try your hand at something a little bit more detailed, a little more challenging and kind of get into this, this sort of medium, um, I would 
would advise you not to throw your money down right away into something expensive like this. I would suggest trying a hobby burner and um, a good quality, I mean probably at least the, the best quality hobby burner that I know of is uh, Walnut Hollow. I think I said that right. I think that's what it's called. Um, <clears throat> that's about the best hobby burner that you can get. And those will run you depending on where you go and um, you know what the prices are in your area. I'd say somewhere between twenty and thirty dollars. And you can offset that cost. You go to either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And of course this is for people in the States. I don't if you're you know overseas or another country um, I really can't say what it will be for you because I, 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 I don't know <laughs> but uh, in the States there should be Michaels just about everywhere uh, or Hobby Lobby I usually prefer Hobby Lobby um, but Michaels is good too and they have you know it's pretty easy to find 40% off coupons and that's where I would go to get your hobby burner. That way you don't have a lot of upfront costs. And um, it'll also teach you a great deal about patience, which is all about wood burning. You gotta be patient. Um, even when you got a you know something that's a little bit more upscale like this one, and it it burns a lot faster and it holds heat and regenerates its heat a lot faster. Uh, it's still it's not like inking. It's not like penciling or painting. I mean, as you can tell by the little kind of gradients of burn that I put on it, it takes some time. So it's not a fast process. Anyway, yeah, I would start out with a walnut hollow. Use that for six months to a year. Get comfortable with it. And if you really like it, you're really digging it, you want to stick with this, you want to take it to the next level, then <clears throat> I would throw down the money for a razor tip. Uh, there's other companies as well. I'm not real familiar I mean I, I got razor tip I, I really like it a lot and I just haven't really tried all that much else there was uh, <clears throat> I originally was not going to get a razor tip um, and since I don't want to get into any you know any legal entanglements of any kind um, we'll just say there was a company in Illinois that I tried to buy something that was similar to this, and it's got two stages where you can switch back and forth. Um, maybe I'll show it uh, at the end of the video. I don't want to move my camera set up right now, but it was similar to this, um, a hundred dollars more, and it was local. It was, you know, in terms of being in the states, my own country, you know, and it was a hundred dollars more. And I waited months and months and months, and. Uh, I should be okay because I think that company went belly up. I know they at least declared bankruptcy. And of course, there's different stages of bankruptcy. I'm going to need a little bit more heat. Um, so I don't know if they're completely out of business or not. But uh, I talked to a few other pyro artists online on Facebook who were very unfortunate that... They got the unit uh, that they ordered, and now they can't get replacement parts. I, I think there's something called Colwall or some, something with a C, some company like that that can give you uh, compatible components for uh, this particular company. I, <laughs> I can't say it. Uh, too poor to get sued. <laughs> but... Um, Anyway, I waited months uh, for 
for them to return. And fortunately, uh, the um, there's like a statute of limitations as far as like a time limit to where you can have your bank um, pull your money back. Because I had called this company several times. I had talked to I've talked to the uh, the owner, the owner's son. I talked to their accountant. Uh, kept getting reassured. Oh yes, you know it's it's just a minor mistake, and you know we'll send you this unit. Just never did happen. <clears throat> so I got my money back right before they declared bankruptcy. Thank goodness for that. And uh, I ordered this from Canada. Say what you would, you know, and, uh, not it. everybody in the States is crazy about Canada. I don't really care either way. <laughs> um, people are just people. But anyway, um, I got it for $100 less. All the same stats, technical stats and everything. Um, and I got it in less than a week. And it was awesome. And I've been loving it ever since. So, and uh, I've had the same great experience when I uh, buy uh, component parts, uh, styluses especially. Um, before we moved here, I'm in my new house now. Uh, we just probably moved about a month, month and a half ago. And... Um, my studio was kind of a <laughs> studio slash storage room, and it just, I wasn't very happy with it, and uh, I never felt comfortable. Here, I, I, I love my studio room here. It's messy, but <laughs> what can I say? That's how I operate, but uh, there, I, a lot of times, I would sit on the couch and would burn, and... Um, my wife, God bless her, would trip over cords constantly, and <laughs> my stylus is flying, and uh, was constantly replacing styluses and get banged up, dinged up, stepped on. So, but uh, now they got my own little designated room, and it's not a, you know, combination studio storage room. All's well, been very well. But yeah, I mean, going back to my original point. If you're interested in starting this, start with the hobby burner. And then, um, I can't say enough good things about razor tip. I'm sure I won't get any legal uh, entanglements there. I mean, I'm saying something positive. Uh, great company. Um, good prices. Uh, shipping was really fast. I've since ordered, I don't know... <clears throat> I'd say five extra styluses, <clears throat> pardon me, and uh, one extra set of cords. So um, I'm looking to possibly, you can, these are fixed heads. And I, I do kind of like those. I, I tend to prefer the ballpoint and I use the spoon. I don't know if you can see that very well. I use a spoon for shading purposes. And sometimes I use the ballpoint for sh shading purposes. I'm trying to get into a tight little area, but for larger areas, the spoon. Um, but they also have adjustable styluses where, uh, and I have not messed with those at all, so I can't really say that much about it. I've really only been a pyro artist for about three years. I've been uh, an etcher. I etched granite, <clears throat> still do. Uh, for professionally for about 15 years or more. Um, I'm trying to kind of get out of the cemetery part of it because what I'll do is, that's how I, I got started. I was etching headstones for monument companies. And when I say headstones, I mean tombstones, yes. I mean in cemeteries and graveyards, yes. That's what I mean. <laughs> Whether they're portraits, deer scenes. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep clearing my throat. Just woke up. So, and allergies. Fun thing. <laughs> uh, but um, 
you know, you go to some tears, you see the guy catching the fish, jumping out of the water, you know. And uh, it was, it was pretty cool at first. I liked it at first, but it's just kind of always the same thing. And I've, I've since kind of lost interest in it. And I, you know, perhaps it's more the artist in me. I, I, I want to do what I want to do. I want to work. I, I, I don't mind commissions. I like commissions, especially portraits. I think I'll always like portraits. Simply because they're hard to do. And I like the challenge. And I like to think I do pretty well on them. I, I must because people keep coming back. So, <clears throat> oats wood burning or etched on black polished granite, you know. And I've done a couple uh, graphite. I don't, I'm trying to get out of the whole graphite thing. I mean, I, I enjoy it, but, you know, you don't want to spread yourself too thin on several different mediums. It's important to kind of stay focused. But, um, yeah. That's not too bad. Could be a little darker. That's probably never quite now. When we're burning a piece of clothing that's supposed to be black, how black to go? It's for that reason, and I discussed this in my last video. <clears throat> A lot of people will just do line work, and they're afraid to to go dark. You shouldn't shouldn't be afraid to do that. Shouldn't be afraid to darken it. If all else fails, you can try different styluses um, and more shaded areas to also not just make it darker, but create a different texture to help help offset the appearance. At least that's what I do. I think I'm going to need more heat. And that's another thing you'll find as you would burn. It'll, it'll give you a little less heat each, you know, the longer that you burn. But it usually settles, you know, at least in the professional um, tools. It'll usually settle down after a while into a comfortable spot. So, if you hear any screeching or caterwauling in the background, that's just our cats. So. Have attitude and make a lot of noise. Like they do. I actually had a little trouble getting to sleep this morning because I wanted to get back to this. I remember when I was young, <clears throat> I used to have a horrible time finishing projects. I was a start stopper. At least that's what I call them. <clears throat> Coffee break. And you probably pretty much gather by, you know, the verbiage that, you know, start stopper is somebody that is always starting a new project, never finishes one. And I used to be Real big start stopper. And I hated that. It seems like I never finished anything. Then me and a friend of mine, <clears throat> I'm not sure exactly when we started, Some somewhere, I think it was after high school. Yeah, it was, it was. It was right after high school. Uh, we started going to a convention in Dallas, Texas. I live in Indiana, by the way. So, yeah, it's a long drive. <clears throat> and uh, we used to go to this uh, anime convention, second largest in the United States. It was called.
called Project Acon. At least it was at that time. I, I really don't know. I haven't gone in years. I, I still kind of like some aspects of anime, but I don't know. I've gone a much more realistic direction and far less cartoony, I think. At least illustrative, I would say. Um, there are some fantastic anime artists out there, but the problem is there are so many... Oh, I don't want to be mean. <laughs> um, usually what you see is this fan-based, you know, works, you know, and usually by very young people. And it, no offense, I mean, they're, they're doing the best, and I'm sure they do all right for their age and their level of experience. I would wish that a, a lot of them would expand their horizons a little bit. It's, you know, anime art's fine, but do other stuff too. Um, what I appreciated when I was in really much more into anime art was not the kind of uh, silly stuff that, you know, unfortunately I think a lot of kids and even some adults, which is weird, um, is into, <clears throat> but I got into, uh, more of the serious stuff, me and my friend did, um, my friend was more into the, uh, technical animation, which was phenomenal, and the, the Japanese were just, I mean, nobody could touch him on that, and I, I did enjoy that as well, that, but that was really, uh, more my, um, kind of my, second favorite thing about them what i really enjoyed uh from the japanese and the anime was their off wall off the wall sense of humor i loved it uh tenchi miyu ron mahaf um just goofy but it's i mean it was <clears throat> i mean there's other programs other than just anime that the japanese do i th if anybody who's listening or watching this has ever watched and they, they know the Japanese have a very interesting sense of humor and I like it it's very different but some of the the storylines and, and uh, what not for uh, the anime shows the comedy based anime shows you know you'd think how on earth did they come up with that kind of story but uh, I, I love that. So that's what I got into. And it had to be a good quality animation. Um, and I would not, and not to offend anybody who might be into this, but I was, you know, obviously not a fan of Pokemon or Digimon. Or, that stuff's really meant for kids, and it's reflected in the quality of the animation, which I don't think is that spectacular, you know. That's just how I feel about it. Sometimes I gotta turn this around and remind myself which direction the light's coming from. But, um. But yeah, if you get into that stuff, that's fine. I'm not trying to criticize you. But I would encourage you to do other things. The more complicated the subject matter, the faster and the better your um, skills are going to increase and that's what we all want is to get better and uh, I've heard a lot of artists say this and I, I tend to agree that the most difficult thing to do in art is portraits and I'm not talking caricatures I'm talking actual portraits and um, that'll really push your skills to the limit. I would suggest if you're really into anime art, to draw people, real people, and draw them as realistic as you can for practice. And then that will help to kind of modify your anime art when you do draw your anime art and you'll get better. I see a lot of people that draw these anime faces 
and they're all about the anime faces. They want to get the eyes just right, and they want to get the heads just right, and the hair just right. And then you look at the bodies, and they're so misshapen and unproportioned, or I don't know how to say it. <laughs> um, they just look, the bodies just don't look very, very nice. Um, and it doesn't do much good to have a, a nice snappy looking head on the thing when the body looks deformed. And I don't mean super deformed. <laughs> Where it's an actual style technique, I mean it looks bad. And I see that a lot with anime artists. Um, young and adults. I mean, that's that's all they do. And they're, they're never going to go anywhere with that. And, I, and if you're just doing it for a hobby, okay, fine. You know, I'll leave it be. But if you if you want to be serious and if you want to be taken serious, you've got to do other things, and you've got to increase your your skills, your ability level, beyond just doing an anime head. Even if you get sales, it doesn't matter. should always strive to be better than what you are when it comes to your your, your level of uh, artistic ability I have a friend that um, it's kind of slacked off a little bit now which is good because really pushed me a lot when I was younger infuriated me <laughs> just we got into some some pretty nasty verbal uh, verbal little battles there. And we would call each other everything we could possibly think, you know. But I always appreciated the honesty. Sometimes I'd have to go wander off for a while and cool down. Sometimes a day or two. <laughs> And it was funny, uh, because, um, you know, we get around other people and they'd hear us go at it, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, I thought you guys were going to start, you know, swinging at each other or just, you know, stop being, it's like, no, no, we, that's what we do. <laughs> we do that all the time. Um, we've kind of mellowed since then. Um. And uh, just try to respect each other's work, I think, now. And, um, yeah. I think this is finally starting to come together a little bit. The larger the area, the harder it is, I think, to blend on a natural piece of wood like this. I mean, this isn't like... Poplar, this is basswood. Um, so it's not like poplar where it has a nice even mesh, tight and even mesh. Soft, but you know, tight and even. And uh, it's not like uh, birch, which is also very tight and even, but uh, it is a softer wood and it is definitely a challenge to burn on. And the larger the area, the harder it is to blend. You have to get, and I think this is true for all art forms, you have to get to a point where you're not fighting it so much, but you feel where you, where you get kind of comfortable. I mean, not to say that you don't, Try your best. It's not to say that you're not striving for quality and to always take it to the next level. But if you're not enjoying it, you're doing something wrong. That's the thing. I I kind of went in and out of art a lot. Some of that was my ego. My friend is a tremendous artist and it's been you know in school it was very challenging for me to, to deal with that and 
went from being the school's number one artist to the school's number two artist. And nobody likes to be number two. And that was a very difficult and humbling experience for me. But I did get over it. And I did figure out a lot of my problems was not so much that I wasn't as good as my friend. But it was that I had not quite found my comfort zone. The mediums that I prefer to work in. Which is, of course, wood burning and granite etching. And I do like granite etching. I don't like it as much as wood burning because it is very loud. I'm talking about the etching. And it vibrates the crap out of your hands, even though you can get, you know, special tools that are take a lot of that vibration out. It's still there to some extent. It can be hard on the wrists, hard on the hands. But, uh,. There is a kind of a, an effect that comes from that. And it's kind of fun to work in reverse instead of like, you see, wood burning is kind of like, you know, um, sketching with pencils or inking where you're applying shadow to create form. And with etching, it's just the opposite. It's kind of like using um, white pencils or china, white china markers on black construction paper. You're instead of applying uh, shadows to create form, you're applying highlights to create form. Whole different ball of wax, but fun. But I much prefer to do it on my own terms. I'll get. Uh, tiles from hardwood stores hard hard hardware <laughs> yeah I'm speaking really well today hardware stores and I have myself a tile cutter and I'll cut them up to I usually tend to like uh, six by six it gives me just a large enough area to do something fun on it and it's small enough where it doesn't take me forever to do it and I can keep my prices down at that size to where people will buy. I, I found that's the, the, the comfort size and price point area for me. <clears throat> I also do like four inch square uh, pieces. And of course, uh, sometimes I do full one foot square. I don't do many of those these days because they just... The amount of work that goes into it, it's too expensive, and people don't want to spend that kind of money. And it's, in truth, it's kind of difficult finding a spot, because this isn't, they're, they're pretty heavy. It's not really a wall hanging. Um, even though it's still kind of two-dimensional, it's kind of more of a, a 3D object, uh, art object. And if you put it on a six inch piece, well here, let me just show you up here. I got it right over here. Okay. Let's move the headless horseman out of the way. This is young Harry Potter. I usually use like a little stand like that and that is polished granite black polished granite uh, technically it's called jet black and all I'm doing is etching the polish off to create the the white areas so you can you can kind of feel it um, you kind of develop a feel for it the more that you do this kind of art so, we'll set that aside. But that's something else that I do. And one of these days I'll do a video on that. <clears throat> Although I won't be talking in that one because you won't hear me. <laughs> so, there wouldn't be much point in that, would there? So, but, um, 
This is what I love about the razor tips. They heat up really quick. And I'm, I mean, I, I just turned that off and turned it back on and I'm already burning again. Um, what's even better, well, maybe not better, it's, I, I think equally important is not only that it cools, that it, that it heats up right away, but it cools down right away too. And that's important, especially when you have cats who jump up like little morons onto everything. I remember when I was still using my Walnut Hollow hobby burner, I'd have a, a plate sitting there and I'd unplug it and set it on there to cool down because they give you those cheap little stands to set it on which never work. Oh, that's another tip for you if you get a Walnut Hollow. Get you like a little plate. Not a paper plate. <laughs> you know, your normal, you know, plate. Stoneware, uh, porcelain, whatever the hell it's made of. Heck, sorry. There's my factory side coming out. Yes, I work in manufacturing and I'm around a lot of people that cuss. So that might slip out every once in a while. And you'll have to forgive me on that. I've been trying to stop for years. And it just kind of slips out. So, sorry. Anyway. But yeah, uh, this thing, I mean, within, I'd say, 12 to 15 seconds after I turn this device off, I can touch the tip with my fingers, and I love that. Um, so it's a, a major safety thing there. So for those of you that are concerned about safety, there you go. But um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, the hobby burners. It, it's. It can be so aggravating because you 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 want to get going right away and burning it and especially I think it's I, I don't know if it's more aggravating if you're an artist or if you're just you know somebody who's never really you know delved into that much stuff before I I don't know who it would be more frustrating for because I know as an artist <clears throat> penciling or inking or using markers and colored pencils which I did back in the day. Um, again, more illustrative like. It was very frustrating to get used to that hobby burner because I, you know, you plug it in, and in case of the hobby burner it actually has an on and off switch, you turn it on, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and then finally heats up enough, you can start to <clears throat> burn. But the problem is, is that heat diffuses into the wood and is drawn into the wood to create the burn it's just a slow rebuilding the heat or you know yeah <laughs> whereas with this I mean it's continually trying to charge up quickly and um, Almost lost my train of thought. But uh, it's always trying to charge quickly. So, I mean, you plug it in, you turn it on, wait a couple seconds, you're you're ready to begin. And you got to be very careful. I mean, these... I have been very lucky so far that I have not really burned myself on these things. And how in three years I have managed to avoid that, I don't know. Because I've heard some horror stories. And I tell people that, and like, well, how many times you burn yourself? And I'm like, well, I haven't yet. <laughs> and some of them don't even really believe me, but I, I haven't, you know. Of course, now that I said that, and I'm videotaping myself, it's probably going to happen. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I'll heal. So there, too, I guess, is a lesson. You want to get comfortable, but you are dealing with a very um, dangerous tool. So comfortable, but at the same time respectful of what this device is capable of doing. <clears throat> Even if it's a hobby burner. 
So it's getting extremely hot. I think the, uh, the manufacturing specs say it can get up to uh, the hobby burners, up to 950. And um, I can tell you that over time, it's not going to get as hot. As it is the first couple times you use it it'll kind of start to degrade after a while so I mean it'll still burn but you know it just does I mean I know that from personal experience um, the nicer burners like this um, I have already explained to you how that works but uh, they get considerably hotter than the hobby burners so be very careful it's a little, I think it's in the fact that there's thinner, in this case of the spoon, it's like almost like a foil tip. Um, the metal's not as thick, so it's, I mean, it's easier to, to get it up and going and keep it going. And uh, so, yeah, you want to be careful about that. I am really in, enjoying this work. It's fun. I do like fantasy. No one's ever really ridiculed me yet, and I'm surprised. I would think, you know, I thought, you know, I really like, uh, as I've stated before, kind of the symbolic theology works and fantasy. And I remember talking to my wife about that. I said, I'm going to get ridiculed for that she says why and I said I don't know I said because you know see I'm I'm in my I'm going to be 43 uh, in a couple weeks and so I grew up in the 80s and the 90s and there was this big thing back then saying like you know Dungeons and Dragons and evil and actually I play that <laughs> and uh, I can tell you it's not evil but they try to say like you know even like mickey mouse the sorcerer's apprentice is evil and you know anything dealing with magic is evil and it's it's just not true um we're allowed to use our imaginations the point is the you know you know whether you're a christian or or not i mean it's important not to let your imagination carry you too far away where you lose touch with reality and some people do that, and it's, it's an unfortunate thing. But um, it's really not from the movies. It's, it's not from the games. I mean, these are people that would lose their mind playing Candyland, you know. They're just not all there to begin with. Um, we did a convention we bumped into one gal and uh, I was a little concerned because <laughs> uh, she was at one of those unfortunate I gotta cool this down a little bit I want a definite definite tonal difference um, and I don't mean this to ridicule in any means um, but she had obviously lost touch with reality um, we were at a renaissance festival and at first, it just seemed like, oh, okay, well, she's playing in character. And it very, I'd say probably within the first five to ten minutes, it became clear that this wasn't somebody pretending. This was somebody who'd kind of lost touch. My wife has all this experience as a clinician and minored in psych. And uh, so, I mean, she found it fascinating. I found it a little disturbing. <laughs> But, uh, you know, and I won't go too far into it, but, you know, I, my heart goes out to her. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate that sometimes, you know, people, uh, I don't want to go into a big thing about it, but it seemed like a lot of it came from loneliness. So I wonder if it was really that she'd lost touch with reality or maybe it wasn't intentional kind of leap out of reality because something maybe there was abuse I'm not sure and somehow she had you know reality became too painful maybe I don't know 
if possible. But uh, I'm I'm glad that we've kind of gotten over that, and uh, you know, especially by the time the Lord.